Hi, this is Jordan Sadney with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension at Dallas Center. Today I will be sharing with you session two of the Dallas Vegetable Garden, part two of the series. Hopefully many, many more to come for in the next year, few years. As a recap, last week, well, last month, was the first program and I shared with you that I have a 50 by 60 fenced vegetable garden that was a big mess, spent a lot of time cleaning it up, set up a location for 16 beds and this is a panorama view of the garden, 16 beds, one foot deep by four foot wide, um, compost beds and the alleyways are two and a half feet, again, one foot deep with mulch. Instant vegetable garden, hopefully it will keep all the perennial weeds that have been roaming free for the last 10 years, uh, keep them in check. It took a lot of work, but I left the alleyways here and here open and I'll show you why, because we need to install the uh, irrigation system, and I'll show you that. I did plant four beds with all kinds of uh, Asian vegetables, and if you remember, I told you last uh, week, uh, last month, why do I keep saying last week? Last month, that on 1st of January, we had a severe uh, cold for three nights, freeze in the teens, killed everything. So now the vegetable garden is dormant. So what do you do when the vegetable garden is dormant and you can't enjoy garden work in, in the sense of actual physical work in the garden? Well, we all forget that half the vegetable gardening is indoors, planning, preparation, design, review notes, see what went wrong, study, calling, asking for advice, ordering seeds, cleaning your equipment, so really, when the garden is dormant, you still should be working full time, just getting ready for the following season. So my plan for spring is to have a pepper variety trial, tomato variety trial, grafted tomato trial. I'll be grafting tomato and watermelon, and I'll grow some here to test them. I plan to, uh, I 
I plan to grow the watermelon vertically with support and cages. Uh, that will be another show in the future. And uh, a pollinator habitat uh, on the edge of the garden to grow a perennial ornamentals that uh, attract pollinators. So uh, in today's uh, meeting, I will be talking about the pepper variety trial and the pollinator habitat. So this is the setup that I do whenever I want to germinate any uh, plants to test them. I have uh, old seeds from 2008-2010, uh, 10 varieties that I want to test. Um, I have two new ones from last year. Those are okay. I don't have to test for their germination. They should be fine. And I ordered six more. So what I do whenever I want to pre-germinate some seeds, whether they are old, or to speed up the germination and sort of directly seeding them into, into soil media, into compost or flats, I do the pre-germination in water. So here's the bucket, the parts that you need, here's the bucket, here's the stick, a bamboo stick or any stick, you'll see why it's needed. And I bought uh, those uh, tea strainers, uh, each for a, a different variety so they don't get mixed in the water. You know, like you fill it with the seed, you put a label on it, so you give it like a number to go with that name. And an air pump with air stones uh, to keep adding air to the water so that the seeds in the water don't rot. Okay, if you are growing, if you're trying to germinate only one variety, you don't need uh, those uh, strainers. You can just drop the seeds in the water. You can put the seeds in a, in a beaker, in a half gallon, in a, in a cup, anything. And that air stone does not have to be that large. This is what I have. Uh, it can be a small one. Uh, it will work fine. And uh, it's been, you know, some species can germinate in three days, some in a week. Uh, it's a great way to speed up. Uh, like okra, you'll see it in two days, um, the root radical coming out. Um, you know, that root tip showing that, you know, it's uh, then you can uh, stop the air pump, take the seeds out and then drop them in that flat and you already speeded up the germination and guaranteed that what you are putting in the flat is germinated. And uh, this is at the 
and showing you that I have uh, the uh, 10 uh, varieties, so, uh, each one with its own unique, uh, uh, you know, uh, species, so they don't get mixed up in the water. And I label them so I know one is this variety, like the two is that variety. So, uh, you know, um, and the air pump is running, the water is bubbling, and I started the process. Uh, note that the seeds are floating because they're still dry. You'll come back a day later and you'll see the uh, seeds have sank to the bottom um, because they are absorbed the water, they soaked, uh, they are heavier. They, uh, that, I mean, that's not important. This is just, uh, um, just extra information. It works great. Seven days later, I went and looked at those seeds. Remember, these are from 2008, 2010. Uh, we, all, we almost uh, thought about throwing them away because they should not be uh, alive. But I, with my experience, I have seen, uh, um, you know, some survive much longer than that. So here is, uh, and that's how they look uh, about uh, uh, when the seeds have soaked up and ready to go. This uh, variety number one, nothing has germinated. I mean, some look like they will. I mean, I can see the little tip here pointing, but it hasn't uh, poked through the seed coat. So I don't know if it's soaked up the water and rotted. Uh, that is definitely uh, if he could be dead. Uh, not, not, not. You cannot tell if it's dead or alive just by looking at them near. While the uh, variety number four is definitely doing very well. Some are. You look at the root radical, uh, almost a quarter of an inch long, and and that's what you really need. This is the this size and this size and this size here when the root uh, tip is just barely poking out is the best time to transplant it into a flat. Uh, into a tray so that you don't risk the chance of breaking the, these root tips. So you have to be very careful uh, when uh, if you leave it for too long. So check it every day until you learn for this variety, for this crop species, uh, how long it takes and uh, make note of that. Uh, variety number five also did very well uh, and more uniform. All of them uh, germinated about the same pace, same speed. Uh, the, these look very beautiful. And uh, while six, again, like number one, or like all the other, uh, don't show any sign of life. And uh, same thing for seven. Um, you know, actually, these here uh, look like they didn't even soak up water too much. Uh, like, see the dark uh, seed color compared to when they swelled up and soaked a lot of water. They uh, li the color lightened a little bit. So uh, I don't have any hope uh, for this uh, uh, variety. Uh, number 10 uh, uh, showing some germination, but not as uniform as four or five. So uh, if I had thrown all those seeds just because they're 2008, 2010, I would have lost a third of those plants uh, that were still alive. So it uh, wouldn't hurt to do a germination test. Uh, um, you saw the supplies are very easy to prepare and very easy to do. You just have to keep that air pump running 24 hours a day. Remember that. Okay, nine days later, two days later, after I showed you those pictures, I took, uh, took them out uh, to seed them to terminate the pre-germination, and I counted uh, the number of germinated out of 18 
seeds that I used and calculated the percent germination. So you see that El Jefe Jalapeno and El Rey Jalapeno, 100%, followed by New Mexico Mirasol, 72%, Guajillo, 39%, and then four, one, two, three, four, with 6%. Well, that uh, those six percent are promising because uh, maybe they are slow to wake up, and I'm sure more will will uh, will germinate, will sprout from the seed, and I'll follow up next time, show you update on these percentages. So I hope that this 39 will be higher. These uh, now that are six percent will also be higher. So out of these 10 that I'm testing, if I had thrown them uh, as garbage, um, I would have lost 8 out of 10 that have potential of uh, that are alive or potential for 100% uh, germination. Only two so far, early jalapeno and jalapeno M that uh, um, uh, are still showing no sign of life. By the way, all of these are uh, hot pepper um, uh, varieties um, that you see here. And as a reminder, my vegetable garden has uh, four zones, each one with four beds. Uh, so my plan is to uh, set up a, a irrigation system, automatic irrigation system, uh, so that each zone can be watered separately or uh, let's say I'm uh, growing tomato here and greens on this side. Well, tomatoes, uh, they need more frequent and longer watering. So, uh, you know, they can uh, be watered uh, different times and different uh, schedules. Uh, so we've been working on that irrigation. And this is the uh, design that we came up with for the vegetable garden. Uh, it will consist of a RPZ, which is a backflow preventer, uh, the fertilizer tank, and next to it the fertilizer injector uh, that will be controlled by a, uh, the controller here, and the water will go to a four-valve manifold so that the controller can click in and irrigate uh, one zone at a time. So there will be four lines coming. One line for zone one, one line for zone two, one line for zone three, and one line for zone four. I told you earlier that I have not put the uh, mulch in the alleyway in this section and this section in preparation for laying these lines and these lines here, irrigation line. Um, this will last for years, um, you know, with a timer, with the controller, with a timer, with a tank, you know, like 50 gallon uh, tank full with fertilizer. I can go for weeks at a time if I want and not worry about the garden being watered uh, or uh, fertilized. Okay, not that this will happen, but definitely uh, better than watering by hand like I showed you uh, uh, last month's video. Uh, this is a not uh, cheap system. Um, you see the pots alone are uh, 22.58 and probably another uh, four or five hundred in labor to hire an expert uh, to set up all this, but it's definitely worth it. And that's why I joke and I tell everybody, uh, a gardener who wants to start a vegetable garden, I tell them uh, gardening is not cheap and it's not easy. It's a lot of work. And that first tomato you eat, it's probably a $10 tomato. So chew very slowly. And as you can see, just the uh, irrigation parts are 2200 not co not counting another 2000 for the mulch and compost and the labor and all this. So it is not cheap. Initially, uh, gardening is very expensive, but five years down the road, uh, your cost is just uh, seed, water, fertilizer, pesticides, is like a min minimal. Okay, now the vegetable garden is food for the stomach, food for the body, and I needed something that's food for the soul, what I'm calling pollinator habitat. On the west edge of the vegetable garden, uh, I'm going to uh, rototill a four foot uh, wide bed, the length of the garden, so four foot by 50, and plant all kind of these, uh, what I call low maintenance, 
plant perennial that will flower uh, at least or hopefully 10 months out of the year. Like now, two months in the winter, we won't have any flowers, but something in the rest of the year, something or another will be flowering. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is rototill, add six inches of uh, compost, rototill again, uh, plant, and then add uh, mulch. And uh, with, with irrigation, I have set up the ideal uh, habitat for all these flowering that will uh, look good. I mean, when you look at these pictures, imagine uh, during the season, one of these or another will be flowering. Um, or uh, the green texture, you know, just uh, leaf coloring uh, uh, for the wild pollinators, for the nature to help pollinate the, the watermelon. Come invite them and they will um, help me pollinate my um, uh, vegetables that need pollination, like the watermelon, squash, things like that. Tomato, by the way, tomato and pepper don't need uh, pollination in case you did not know that. So um, stay with me, um, follow with this program. Every month so you'll see the progress and then one day the garden will be planted. So we, by then we will talk about specific topics or update on how this crop is doing or that crop is doing. This is the second uh, part of the series and we are growing together, uh, uh, learning the planning and 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 uh, how to prepare ahead. Um, these plants are kindly donated by Seville Farm, who are so, uh, been supportive of Texas A&M, and um, we will um, follow follow with you, uh, give you a follow up on how we've been doing. Those plants are doing, and here's pictures of more plants: lavender, coral bells, salvia, uh, uh, all kind of uh, beautiful plants. Um, Good, and of course, uh, three uh, grasses um, for uh, texture. Okay, final thoughts. Uh, first, I apologize for the audio quality. Uh, today, we are stuck at home because we have a severe rain and sleet storm. Um, hopefully, it will not be a repeat of last uh, year's uh, uh, Armageddon, when we stuck at, we're stuck at home for nine days, they're only saying for snow for one day. So the audio quality is bad. I apologize about that. Uh, uh, next By next meeting, hopefully the irrigation system will be planted and the uh, um, uh, pollinator habitat will be planted. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll uh, follow up with those. Thank you and uh, keep gardening and keep having fun.